The circumstantial evidence against Nathan Carmen had been lying in plain sight for years before his surprising indictment and arrest this month on allegations he killed his mother at sea off New England in a plot to inherit millions of dollars. Federal prosecutors in Vermont are not commenting on the timing of their decision to put the case before a grand jury, and the indictment offers no clues and no new information on the case, which included a dramatic rescue at sea and the suspicious deaths of two members of a wealthy New England family. Legal experts and other law enforcement officials say the delay in bringing a criminal case could be the result of several factors, including that his mother and his boat have never been found. Read more, man arrested after rushing at Queen's Coffin as wait times reach 24 hours it's very difficult to charge murder federally. So I think what the government has been doing for the last six years is to build its case to charge him with mail fraud and wire fraud, said Jessica Brown, a former state and federal public defender who is now an assistant professor at Vermont Law School. The grand jury indictment accuses Carmen, 28, of Vernon, Vermont, of murder and fraud in the killing of his mother, Linda Carmen, during a fishing trip that began in Rhode Island. Carmen made international headlines when he was found alone in a life raft near Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, eight days after he and his mother left port. The indictment also accuses him of fatally shooting his millionaire grandfather, John Chakalos, in 2013 in Connecticut, but does not charge him with that killing. He has repeatedly denied any involvement in both deaths. Federal prosecutors say their deaths paved the way for Carmen to inherit an estimated 7 million US dollars, 10 million Australian dollars, his mother's share of Chakalo's estate. The inheritance remains tied up in probate court in Connecticut, where his mother's three sisters are seeking to bar Carmen from receiving any money from his grandfather's estate. Seven of the eight counts in the indictment are charges related to what prosecutors allege were fraudulent efforts to get money from his grandfather's estate or insurance companies. The other count accuses Carmen of killing his mother. Vermont U.S. Attorney Nico Lascarist, through a spokesperson, declined to comment on the case. Federal public defender Michael Desotel, whose office is defending Carmen, also declined to comment on the indictment. His state of mind is strong and he knows he has a good team of defense lawyers working for him," Desautel said. Some law enforcement officials who were involved in the investigation said the indictment could be the result of new evidence that is not being disclosed. Or, perhaps, federal prosecutors in Vermont were more aggressive in assembling all the evidence collected by a variety of local, state and federal agencies and presenting it to a grand jury. One of the issues is jurisdiction especially when you cross state lines, and who has the ability to bring all that together under one roof," said Donald Melanson, police chief in Windsor, Connecticut, where Chakalos was killed. And I think that's why, rightfully so, the U.S. Attorney's Office took that and took responsibility for that and brought everything together. When you look at the overall picture, it brings, to me, a very clear picture of how everything tied together to achieve his, Carmen's, goals," he said. Read more. Third man arrested over fatal Brisbane stabbing, one still on the run in 2014, before Melanson joined the department, Windsor police drafted an arrest warrant charging Carmen with murder in his grandfather's death, but a state prosecutor declined to sign it and requested more information, according to a search warrant for Linda Carmen's home in Middletown, Connecticut, obtained by police after she disappeared at sea. Neither state nor federal prosecutors in Connecticut or Rhode Island ever brought any charges against Carmen. The case went cold. Then came the ill-fated fishing trip, which roused investigators' suspicions about Carmen. But the probe into Linda Carmen's disappearance also failed to produce an arrest. In 2017, investigators began keeping tabs on a lawsuit filed in federal court in Providence, Rhode Island, where insurers and Carmen were suing each other over his rejected $85,000 US dollars, $126,000 Australian dollars, claim for the loss of his boat, named the Chicken Pox. The insurance case tied all the evidence together and may have spurred a new effort to charge Carmen, current and former investigators said. The insurer's lawyers laid out a case accusing Carmen of plotting both killings and covering them up, using police investigation findings and information they obtained themselves, including a month before Chakalo shooting, Carmen bought a rifle that can fire the same bullets as the ones used in the shooting. Carmen invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination during a deposition when asked about the rifle, which was never found. 
Carmen destroyed his laptop computer's hard drive and a GPS device in his truck after his grandfather was killed. He again took the fifth when asked why dot before the 2016 fishing trip, Carmen had altered the boat in ways that contributed to its sinking, the judge in the Rhode Island case found in rejecting Carmen's insurance claim. Witnesses testified he removed two stabilizing trim tabs from the stern, near the vessel's waterline, leaving holes that he tried to seal with an epoxy stick. An expert on tidal patterns testified the life raft could not have floated toward Martha's Vineyard from the spot Carmen claimed the boat sank, but in fact would have drifted in the opposite direction. Carmen's attorney said that it was the first time he had used sea charts and that he was confused about the boat's location. After his grandfather was killed, Carmen inherited about 550,000 US dollars, 819,000 Australian dollars. Read more, David Beckham waits more than 10 hours in queue to view Queen's Coffin by late summer 2016, prosecutors said Carmen, who had moved from Connecticut to Vermont, was unemployed and low on funds after quickly burning through most of that money, much of which he spent on his new home. It was then that he set up the fishing trip with his mother with plans to kill her, authorities said. The relationship between mother and son was strained, but fishing was one of the ways they were still able to connect. Carmen remains detained while his case is pending. Federal prosecutors argued in court documents that he should remain locked up while awaiting trial because he poses a flight risk and is a danger to the community. Prosecutors cited the violence and planning involved in the two killings and his apparent lack of ties to his community, a factor in bail arguments. They said he has little personal interaction with other people, having alienated his family because of his conduct. They also said he discontinued the mental health treatment he had received from early childhood until he was 17. They wrote that Carmen was diagnosed with potential mood and psychotic disorders in 2011, and that he had a history of hostility and aggression. Carmen and his relatives also have said he has Asperger's syndrome, a form of autism that can be characterized by social awkwardness and repetitive behavior but is not associated with an increased likelihood of violence. Carmen has said he is misunderstood and an easy target for police because